is Lee Iverton. I'm an architect and artist based in Glasgow in Scotland and I've been working with artist Ben Parry on a series of installations both in Govan and Gdansk. Uh, in Govan we made an installation and sculpture out of rope that we found on the shipyards and we've come to Gdansk to enact a similar process. So in being here we've kind of looked at the area, looked at the old shipyard area and we identified uh, WL4, um, a group of artists who have inhabited uh, a building next to us and they've turned that building into studio space, uh, gallery space and one of the artists in this space has um, a lot of rope they found from the shipyard. So we're currently repeating the, the process that we enacted in, in Govan here in Gdansk using the timber frame, using rope to create a sculpture which is also a, an enclosure and the intention of that enclosure is to reference the different types of occupation that are currently starting to, to move and take over the historic shipyard area in Gdansk so we're referencing the kind of occupation that happens when artists start to take over old buildings and inhabit old buildings and we're also looking at the other types of occupation as well large-scale government-led cultural occupations such as museums and also private developer occupation in the form of flats, shops uh, and retail. And in this location, which is strategically uh, next to the, the river, the main river that goes into the heart of Gdansk, you see examples of all three types of occupation. Here in Govan, I've been working with a team of seven people as part of an ongoing project called the Strong Women of Clydeside, and that sits under the banner of a sort of a larger collection of projects called Govan's Hidden Histories. So we're looking specifically at women's roles in protest movements here in Govan. We've been looking at three specifically. So the first is the 1915 uh, rent strikes, so Mary Barber, Helen Crawford, it kind of links with the suffragettes. The second is the 1971 Upper Clyde Shipbuilders Work-In. And the third is the 1996 Kinning Park Complex Sit-In, which was a community takeover. Um, and it's really that second one, the Work-In in 1971, which links us to the Riverside Solidarity Project. I mentioned that we've been working also with um, and collaborating with a really exceptional group of people in Gdansk. And they are part of a project called, or a group called Metropolitanka. Uh, and they've been working also for several years, so both of our projects are ongoing, um, to highlight women's roles in the solidarity movement and to begin to really redress, I think, the kind of profound underrepresentation of women um, who took part of that strike action in Gdansk. We've also had the opportunity to collaborate with Metropolitanka directly, uh, primarily with Anna Miller, and we found really speaking to Anna about their process has really generated a lot of interesting comparisons for us. And we've sort of found different routes or ways. It's been very generative to talk to them and also really inspirational. Also as part of the Riverside Solidarity Project, I had the opportunity to go to Gdansk for a week in August and to work with Anna and others from Metropolitanka. And together we devised and delivered a guided walk which incorporates some of the techniques that the SWAC team has been using um, and we have developed as part of our guided walks, which we kind of call art walks, which we've been um, doing here for the last five years. Um, so while I was in Gdansk, Anna and I led a walk around the former Lenin shipyard, specifically highlighting the role of poetry and song in the Solidarity Strike and the way that poems and songs and also slogans were sort of posted or painted onto the exterior wall of the Gdansk shipyard. So during our walk in Gdansk, we, we sort of alternated between English and Polish, um, highlighting buildings and spaces where women were working during the Solidarity Strike. Another thing that we did during our walk in Gdansk um, working with Metropolitanka was to rename some of the sh shipyard streets. For example, the street in front of the telephone switchboard office, we renamed um, Telefonistek, which means women telephone operators. So there's a single word in Polish. It's much better in Polish. <laughs> um, 
And this, this sort of renaming of streets echoes the work that the SWAC team does during our walks. So for example, um, when we're right here, um, we start our walks in the Riverside Museum and then we come over by ferry. We end, we come up along the pontoon here and up along um, onto this this sort of pavement and we have a, a whole timeline of women's actions over a hundred years from 1900 to, to the year 2000 and as part of that we also rename this street and other streets as we go through. Back in Glasgow in September, the SWAC team hosted our fifth annual guided art walk as part of Glasgow's Doors Open Day Festival this, this year. And during this one, unlike the previous, for the first time we incorporated some quotes from the women who were involved in the solidarity strike, so kind of threading through some of the things that we found in Gdansk into Govan. And Standing in front of Fairfield Heritage, which is, like I said, just down the, down the Clyde a, a touch, um, we quoted women who worked in shipyards both here in Govan and in Gdansk. And not surprisingly, there is a tremendous overlap in, in some elements of their stories and in the kind of emotions um, and the details of their experiences. We also hoped as part of this collaboration, and we continue to hope that we will find evidence of specific connections between those involved in the UCS work in, in 1971 here in Govan and those involved in the Gdansk solidarity strike in 1980 because those two industrial actions are only nine years apart. Um, thus far we're still looking for those connections and evidence of communication between like the strike organizers or between people who were working in those two yards. Um, but we're confident that they exist, it's just a matter of finding the evidence or finding people who have those memories. Uh, hi, uh, my name is John Mullen, I'm an artist based in Leaf in Edinburgh. Um, uh, participating on the Riverside Solidarity Project. And uh, in Leith, which you can see here, uh, I, I uh, had several years of um, research, research and regeneration process in this hometown of mine. Um, and um, one of the things that was interested me was the, uh, the heritage plaques that were set up in 1986, uh, which were positioned all over Leith. And it was heritage plaques that were uh, acknowledging the history of various places in Leaf. Uh, these plaques became very important for the people of Leaf's identity um, that they fit, and they felt very attached to the place. And interestingly enough, um, even newcomers that come into Leaf and, and make Leaf their home, are, uh, they also love this history and the, and the fact that it's acknowledged. Uh, they were originally set up um, by by the SDA, the Scottish Development Agency at the time, to kind of make this place look attractive for uh, businesses and money to come in, investment to come into the area. So to kind of like uh, prettify the area, that there was some heritage here. And uh, so, well, you know, whether that was a cynical kind of ploy, um, in my opinion, it doesn't really matter because it became important for everybody uh, and the identity of the community. And similarly, I wanted to test that um, uh, idea uh, and that form. I wanted to test that in places like Govan and Gdansk. Uh, and in Govan, uh, I, I thought it was important to, to address some hidden histories or contested histories, uh, contemporary contested histories, uh, and, and test the idea of identity. And if it is important, uh, 
and effective in, in the government community during the Riverside Solidarity Project. In Govan, I was uh, making work concerned with uh, Govan Graven Docks, which is undergoing a kind of regeneration process uh, at the moment. Um, developers want to move in there and uh, kind of um, uh, redevelop the area, but without much concern for the heritage. So I, I wanted to do something uh, around that topic. Uh, I designed a, um, a heritage plaque to acknowledge the history of the site and uh, asked uh, for permission of the owners um, if I could uh, install the work. Uh, it went through several correspondences, but uh, unfortunately uh, permission was never granted. I actually decided to uh, erect a plaque anyway, which is situated uh, on, on the government graving docks. At the moment there is a planning uh, consultation uh, um, and the owners are, are looking for permission to develop that site. Um, whilst there are also uh, new developments um, with, with uh, uh, an interested party coming in who, who is interested in the heritage of the area which kind of would complement my, my uh, work during the project to acknowledge the, the heritage of the area and its uh, importance for the identity of the uh, government community. Uh, in Gdansk, i done a similar um, project looking at hidden histories on the shipyard in Gdansk, Poland. Uh, over the course of four years, I uncovered uh, um, the history of a certain Nazi-built building which was producing submarines uh, during the Second World War. Uh, I found that it was actually a, a concentration camp, uh, sub-camp, uh, uh, located on that, that premises uh, where they were using workers uh, from the camp to produce the submarines. Um, because the shipyard has gone through a big regeneration process similar to Govan Graven Docks where developers are destroying a lot of the fabric, infrastructure and heritage of the place. They also overlooked that site which I was um, interested and in, in concerned about and researching, uh, the site of the concentration subcamp. So um, I have decided to uh, design a, a history uh, plaque to be located on the site. Um, which has actually been uh, lying derelict and not developed yet. Uh, and I've asked the uh, owners of, of, of the site and uh, the conservation body of Poland to, to acknowledge the work or take on board and acknowledge the site and the history of the site. Uh, I also, during the project, uh, I've done a, a community consultation uh, in the uh, Solidarity Centre uh, in Gdansk um, to ask the public what their opinion is, if they're interested in that history, that part of the history of the shipyard, and if they think it's important. Hey, my name's Andy McAvoy, I'm an architect, an artist working in Glasgow. Um, I'm partaking in the Govan Gdansk exchange programme called uh, Riverside Solidarity um, and it looks to establish links and common pieces of history between these two estuarine riverine territories. Um, I'm standing at, on the site of the former Govan ferry. Uh, um, I was born uh, perhaps just half a mile along the roads here uh, at a time when this river was very very busy with manufacture. Uh, my uncles, my father, my grandfather all used this ferry regularly um, to go to their places of work. Um, common with Gdansk, it's fallen out of heavy production but probably at a much more alarming rate. Uh, nothing is made here anymore. Um, however, there is some residual sense that this was a place of great manufacture uh, which has led to an awful lot of inquiry predominantly from creatives in Glasgow. In a search for some of the missing narrative of this place um, and having gone to Gdansk and seen some of the technology there, um, I have came back to Scotland with a kind of question mark in my mind about what do we actually know about what was made in places like this? Um, 
and do we understand the nature of that technology, the exchange? So I, I've launched a little project as part of the Solidarity uh, Network called uh, the Detonation Shed. Um, and what happens was we went to Gdansk and uh, we found, along with other artists like John Mullen, who uh, have been working in the project for a number of years, that there, Gdansk was predominantly um, involved in the manufacture of submarines, submarines that could have changed the course of the Second World War. And those very submarines um, were predating these estuaries of Scotland at a certain point. We hope to bring the reconnaissance that we've undertaken in Cromarty back to Govan shortly, but also uh, to reflect on how the intangible cultural heritage that projects like this uh, allow for um, has affected uh, everyday, everyday people and perhaps give some kind of nod to the idea that uh, industrial heritage doesn't just die, the landscape will carry the narrative forever and if we react properly then we'll embrace that and um, allow places like this to have some authenticity going forward. <laughs>